Hello, welcome to Talk Salient. I'm Shan Robbins. Coming up, we'll be talking bogus council tax callers and the chance for youngsters to design a trophy for the America's Cup. Joining me to discuss this and more is Kevin Dye, Business Development Manager for Verisona Law. And also joining me is Stephanie Notoski, Chairman of the Business and Enterprise Work Scream of the Shaping the Future program in Portsmouth. Now trending on Twitter Thursday morning is hashtag World Cancer Day. And so to our first story, which is on the front page of the Times. And that reports deaths due to cancer have dropped 10% since 2003. And a report by Cancer Research UK has shown cancer diagnosis increasing and death from cancers such as liver cancer and pancreatic cancer are rising. It says that 20,000 people a year have been saved due to progress in detection and treatment, but sadly we're looking at one in two people getting cancer at some time. So Steph, mm. sad to say that you have personal experience in your family of cancer deaths. I do. Uh, 28 years ago, 1988, my father died of uh, stomach cancer um, and I'm pretty sure that with the advances we've had now, had he been alive today with that, uh, you know, that illness, he probably would have survived. I mean, the care was fantastic, but what we knew about it then was, was obviously still relatively primitive. I mean, the advances we've made have been uh, They're phenomenal. They're incredible, aren't they? When you think <clears> 20,000 people a year are able to be still maintaining their lives and lifestyles. Mm -hmm. Incredible. Indeed. And then, Kevin, also your family. Well, yes, my, my grandmother, many years ago, um, when I was a teenager, so that's a long time ago, you'll be able to work that out for yourself, I dare say. <laughs> but, um, but I understand from that article, it's very interesting, isn't it, that uh, we're able to de detect cancer far earlier than we have done in, in the past, uh, and therefore leads to the numbers, but you're yeah, a great story. but. Um, um, I do quite a bit of work with the Rowan's Hospice and all this, also the Countess Mountbatten Hospice. There's still a lot of people who, whose lives are touched by it, either family members or, or sufferers themselves. So, you know, we need help. Yes, mm. I think that's the thing as well, isn't it? Where, where it gets to the stage where people would like to be in their home if, if they're not actually prepared for it. One of my friends was saying to me, her, I think her mum died about three or four years ago, mm. and she was in... Um, the hospice and then she'd had enough and, and said look I'm not gonna get better I just want to go home now but it was too late for them to organize a mm -hmm. proper bed hospital bed that she needed to have certain bits of care that could have come in had it been arranged in advance but they didn't have enough lead time by the time they realized to, to bring her home and I think with the hospices they also have community in the community nurses that go out and there's all sorts of things attached to the hospices mm -hmm. that um, you kind of don't even realise you need that till you need that. No, there's the, I know there's huge efforts, huge strides taken as well to, to treat people in their own homes if that's their choice. Uh, but even those who, who um, are in hospices, who are sufferers, uh, the, the, the efforts that go to make them and their last uh, time... Wishes and everything. For example, there was a horse brought into this particular hospice that I went into. They, this, this lady wanted to see a horse for the last time. Oh. Marriages organised within, you know, 20 hours, yes. things like that, so... Yeah. Well, I know the uh, Countess Mountbatten Hospice, uh, which is the South Southampton, the charity, we regularly have Pam Bates on and to tell us what's going on and, yes. and the things that go on there, because they have even small things like you fancy a drink, and it's those extra things that you, you can't wait, not you can't wait, but your family might not get you to the evening to bring it in. There's so many little things that, it, that it's, if that charity money goes to help that. Um, and are you going to be doing something for Countess Mountbatten's Hospice Charity? Well, you mentioned Pam Bates there. I should be seeing Pam tomorrow morning. You know we're, we're a member of the same networking group and I get lassoed into doing things which, well, she's a crazy woman. <laughs> I just, uh, I've been a, an auctioneer for horses, uh, which is something I've never done in my life. Uh, and I'm going to be question master or quiz master in a quiz that's taking place called Keep Calm and Narn. Well, you have to eat a curry in the break and all sorts of You have things. to eat a curry. Yeah. Well, I think that's the offering. If you want any, <laughs> any dinner at all, it's a curry or nothing, I think. So, right. uh, and so mm. is that part of the horse thing as well, or is the horse no, thing no, separate? The, uh, it, it's a separate thing, uh, and dare I say it's a separate fund, fundraising thing. So, um, you know, the quiz which will be conducted fantastically well, of course. OK, because you're the quiz master. Well, yeah, but not my questions. I'll okay. just be reading them out, I okay. promise you. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, and, and several other fundraising uh, things that uh, that are done by the hospice. You, you're aware of the Princess World Record, which yes, was achieved that recently was so exciting, at the Mayflower, like the Mayflower Theatre. Theatre. Yes, yeah. Most princesses mm. in one place. Yeah. So I was, uh, in the Guinness mm. Book of Records now. Yes. In Invigilator. I didn't dress 
uh, dress up myself no. as a princess. I might have, but I wasn't But you asked. couldn't as an invigilator, could you? No, you have to be entirely separate and, and um, monitor it all carefully. You're quite right, Chan. <laughs> I only know this because I'm sure it would... Were you an invigilator for Brides in the Isles, which was... Yes. Really before? Yes, we, we, we met there, didn't yes. we? And, uh, but I didn't, again, I didn't dress up as a bride no, then, rather. No, well, I was turned you know. down at the aisle, not for the first time. <laughs> oh, really? Mm. Really, you're making that up? Yes, I am. <laughs> you're going to get in trouble when you get home. <laughs> I frequently do. <laughs> yes. Mm. So, Steph, now tell us what you're up to this weekend. So, the, the, very exciting this weekend, as you, you know, because you introduced me as the chairman of the Business and Enterprise Programme, as part of the Shaping the Future of Portsmouth overall programme. We're running our second Start Your Business event um, at the university building called uh, Portland Street, the Richmond Building in Portland Street, uh, which is the business school. We have um, a, an exciting new venture this year. From 10 a.m. to noon, we actually have a young entrepreneurs event. So if you're 14 to 19 years of age and thinking, what's it like to be my own boss? Then come along all right, to the Richmond Building, Portland Street, and we are going to have an interactive session for an hour or two where we will role play what's it like being your own boss, just to plant that seed. Now at noon, the 19 pluses arrive, and we've got the more traditional start your business event. We've got um, 20 stall holders in a main tent central area. Then roughly every 20 minutes, breakout rooms will sound the klaxon, and you can go to one of up to 11 different sessions, like marketing, raising finance, exporting, IP, business support in the city. And then you can dabble in one and then come out 20 minutes later, go to another one and come back. So that's this Saturday, February the 6th, at the University School. And people could just turn up then? They can do it. We like people to go to the startup portsmouth.co.uk website and register. Over 175 have done so. Wow. So we're really, really, really delighted really with good. that. Um, but obviously, if you're not sure, the weather forecast is iffy for Saturday, which sometimes does have a bearing on whether people do come. But it is indoors. It is indoors, and it is free, of course, as well. <laughs> I forgot to mention that. Uh, so, yes, yeah, so, but the only reason why we ask people to go to the website and register, so simply, we, we can gauge the approximate numbers. But if people don't know whether they can make it or not and want to come along, please come along. Noon to 2.30 is the over-19 event. 10 till noon is the 14 to 19-year-old event. And you have done something similar last year. Uh, so did any businesses see success from coming to your event? Yes, indeed, they did. Um, I'm the, the proudly the leader, the chairman of the Business and Enterprise Workstream. We have 26 members of the, the team. We regularly put on events such as this. Four members who came to start their own business at last year's May event have now joined my work stream to actually help us put on the very programs that they benefited from mm -hmm. nine months wow. ago. Excellent. So, you know, the virtuous circle is yeah. kind of, you know, being made. So I'm, I'm thrilled with that, that they came, started, saw value, and now join the team. But it is a very, um, you have to kind of be a unique type of person that, well, most people possibly want to work for themselves, but the risk of doing so, having, not knowing whether you're going to have a secure income, that sort of thing. But is there some more small businesses growing faster in the sort of local area than the bigger business? What there is, it? there is. Um, I said to Kevin um, earlier, we have around 7,000 businesses in Portsmouth. Five and a half thousand of them are nine or less people in total. Wow. And of that five and a half thousand, 3,000 have five or less people. So that is a quite a dynamic. Mm. You know, you've still yes. got obviously your larger companies like your IBMs and that, but we are becoming very much an entrepreneurial island, which is why Technopole, the innovation space, the cathedral innovation space, are springing up mm. because you've got these plug-in units where you can start your business with a desk, an internet connection, and a relatively inexpensive cost of, of living for a month in, a, in, a, in an incubator. To get started. Yes. Wow. Well, uh, for people, I'll tell you about this last week, I'll tell you again in case anyone's forgotten, but the Isle of Wight encouraging young entrepreneurs, I'm going to lift it up really, but it, you can look online at Isle of Wight County Press, and if you look for young entrepreneurs, and there's something called talent, young startup talent, if you look for young startup talent, there's a £50,000 
kind of winnings that will go mm, towards right. developing your business. And that is for Hampshire as well. So well worth it. And if you wanted to do that and then combine with getting your expertise from, mm. from your weekend, you know, <laughs> yes. what more could you ask for? Well, as an, uh, an ex-bank manager in a previous life, and I used to meet lots and lots and lots of entrep entrepreneurs, but I mean, your event that Saturday, that's absolutely mm. brilliant for young mm. people. That mm. might be the inspiration they need to go forward with an idea. And why not the next Richard Branson or whoever could be described as a successful, successful businessman? Mm. Start, your, you start your business yeah. locally in Portsmouth? Why not? See it grow? More why employment not? for people we, in, our, why in the not? region? Last year we had a 16-year-old who was writing apps for the, you know, the iTunes store. You know, wow. and, and he was doing it literally, classically, mm. in his bedroom. But he had no structure around it. He was just doing mm. it for fun. Mm. So he came along with his with his parents to see, look, you know, I'm 16, you know, I, it is part time. What mm. do I need to start doing? Yeah. And it's fantastic. So yes, I mean, um, the more we can can you know instill that that feeling of entrepreneurship, mm. I think the ball will roll. Brilliant. Now, mm. very briefly, this is in the top page of the top section of the Times, and very sad. But anyway, a gentleman who was an entrepreneur with two friends that started a business, and after two months, he dropped out of it. And they then sold the business for about 174 million pounds. Well, and it was predictive text was mm. what it was. So, mm. yes. Mm. Well, there we are. That it's, it's you get lucky or you don't. You back the wrong horse. There's a guy that turned the Beatles down. There's other people. A guy who had a, a substantial shareholding in Microsoft sold that holding for a few hundred dollars in 1970 something or other. Now worth 17 billion. That holding would be. You know, it's just. I don't know, you do things at the yes. time with the best judgment that you have at the time, but bad luck, old chap. Yeah, mm. yeah, poor man. I don't think he's too... Uh, well, he's obviously not showing how upset he <laughs> is about that. He's probably really pleased for them that they've done really well. There's nothing you particularly missed no, out. No, it's difficult, isn't it? Because um, I've, I've had a, um, a lucky career and a great career, you know, all in one, really. I've worked for large companies and small companies, and I've seen people, you know, have ideas mm. that really, you know, haven't gone anywhere in large companies. And then actually then you hear they leave that large company with that idea maybe or a similar idea mm. and find that someone and take else it on. Yeah indeed. Well that's yeah. all we've got time for just now.